Hi guys, welcome to another SUP Border video. This video is a vlog of me repairing a surf SUP that I unfortunately really badly damaged on a surf trip in Tasmania, Australia. If you want to learn a little bit more about how it was damaged, I will throw the link in the description below. Um, if you're not interested in how to repair a board or learning about how to repair a board, then I shouldn't watch this video because it's pretty long. It's split into three sections, me looking at the damage, trying to assess what I can do. Secondly, preparing it for glassing and glassing it before then sanding it all up and preparing it to get back on the water. I do have a little bit of composite knowledge. Um, I studied composite materials and have worked as a boat builder in the past, but I've never really got stuck into fixing boards. So I'm not claiming to be an expert with any of this. I'm just passing on some of my knowledge and sharing my journey of how I learn um, and made mistakes. If you've got any um, ways in which I can improve how I work, please drop them in the links below because we'd love to learn from it and then share that with our wider community. So I hope you enjoy the video. So the first job was to assess the damage and as you can see significant damage on the rail from a collision where a lot of the fiberglass had broken, there had been a lot of compressed um, foam core, um, not really good situation at all. One of the biggest problems with this board, which is kind of what means it's written off, is the damage to the fin box. As you can see here how they're both very split open. Um, two, of the, two of the three boxes that I ride as a thrust, thruster were broken um, and really that writes the board off and makes it a good candidate for doing a blog about fixing boards. Now I do have a little bit of composite knowledge but I'm no expert when it comes to repairing boards. I've fixed a few dings but this was significant surgery as far as I was concerned. Um, my first task was to really take away some of the damaged material. Um, I was just kind of playing around trying to figure it out, cutting out what I could see was really broken and weak, um, assessing the damage as I went on and trying to understand how I might fix this board going forward. There was quite a lot of loose broken fiberglass in there um, but what I was really trying to do is maintain as much structure as possible because there's as much of that shell as I could possibly keep in there the better. Once I'd removed a lot of that material I started sanding it up and as you can see here I'm making sure that I was wearing a mask because the dust from the board is not very nice stuff. Now in the ideal situation I would be wearing overalls here because the epoxy dust can sensitize your skin so I would recommend that you wear overalls. So after a bit of time digging around and cutting bits of five glass out I had a bit of an idea how I would make the repair and here I talk you through it. So what I've done basically is I've tried to identify what the the where the good fiberglass is and actually there's still quite a lot of good structure there this is really quite tough I've really minimized what I've taken out I've only just taken these two pieces out because actually there's still quite a lot of strength in this and kind of trust try and patch it um, maintaining the rail um, so what I'm going to do on this particular piece I think I'm just going to get rid of all of the paint because to get a good um, chemical bond to the rest of the epoxy um, I need to get rid of the paint um, so I'm just going to work on that and then I think what I'll probably do is fair back this a little bit it's a little bit might be hard to see on the camera but it's sticking out a bit there um, and then I'll probably patch over all of this and just, um, fill fill in here with some bubbles or maybe a bit of foam shape it in again and then kind of patch over this area I've got to shave this down a little bit to give me a little bit of scope to get that repair on without creating a bump. I've got a few other issues in the, in the boxes. Two boxes have been pushed through and this one here has been pushed away. But I don't want to take out these boxes. This will that'll be a big, big job. So I've got a bit of a plan for how I'm going to do this and fill the boxes um, and seal them so they're sealed um, so I'm going to get something in there just to key them up this one's probably not so bad this one's split all the way along um, and up it probably won't ever quite be tight enough but I can deal with that with some little shims but I'm going to try and seal it with some epoxy and some bits and pieces and then um, try and drill and get some resin in there 
box. But yeah, what I mean is I think this box might be wider now. Well, that's my fear, which means repairing it might be trickier. Yeah, I mean, it's the wrong thin for the wrong side, but you can see that there's a lot of wobble there now. The box has really opened up. So the next step was to get fully suited up because I was going to start sanding in anger really. I went full suit, gloves, mask and goggles for this. Really starting to attack a lot of the paintwork, really keying up the surface. When you're doing any composite repair it's really important to clear away any paint and sand back or key the surfaces to make sure that the epoxy gets a really good bond to the fiberglass that's already there. One of the key things I was concerned about is not destroying the shape of the board or the shape of the rail. So here you can see me using a small wooden block with my sandpaper just to make sure that I maintain that shape, maintain that sharp rail on the bottom of the board um, to make sure that I can keep the performance in the board. It also helped me flatten out that bump that I discussed earlier. So with lots of hand sanding done to prepare it for glass work or keying the surface, uh, it was now time to get the power tools out. And I was using this small belt sander really to prepare the taper of where I was going to put the glass. So I was tapering back the existing glass work around the repair so my two layers of mat that I was planning to put on um, wouldn't create a bump on the surface. So I'm just thinning off the edges of the repair near the hole um, just so I can enable a very nice smooth transition of existing board into repair glass. Now the glass work on the board isn't particularly thick so you've got to be super careful using a power tool but it did speed up the process compared to hand sanding. It also really helped as you can see taking off that paint. What's up guys so last time we left off I'd um, done some uh, sanding and digging out of this uh, board to get it ready to do a composite repair. Um, so I've acquired some glass tape, 200 grams per square meter, um, nice and light, and I'm gonna set this up, talk you through it. So big, I'm a big believer in um, preparation whenever you're doing anything with composites. So I'm gonna get set up, I'm gonna get the board um, all set up in a little um, stand that I'm gonna make out of a cardboard box. So I'm ready to ready to work on it, um, and uh, we'll just see how it goes, eh? So what I'm doing here is I'm just taking a cardboard box and cutting a slit in it because I want to make sure that the piece I'm working on is nice and accessible, um, and basically I, I don't want any of the resin to run out because um, I want to just be working on top of it. So gravity does its work really. So um, I've done it. A quick go seems to be pretty good, but actually what um, the board is is at a bit of an angle so I'm going to straighten this up and um, then I think we'll be ready to go. So I've come back to the, um, the repair um, and I've just been looking at it trying to figure out what the next step is really because if you look at it we've got a void in there. I'll probably fill this with a bit of um, polystyrene just to pack it out a bit. I'll then probably mix up some epoxy um, with some micro bubbles in. Micro bubbles are kind of, um, uh, it turns the glue into a bit of a, a filler, um, gives it a little bit of structure to the, to the epoxy. Um, and then I'll probably build the rest of the shape up with that before, and put my first layer of 200 GSM uh, bi-directional um, glass on, I think. Um, and I'll probably do a couple of layers of that actually. I'll, I'll sort of taper out the edges to make sure that when I sand it, um, I'm not just gonna take away all the material. So yeah, it needs a sort of probably a couple of sort of circular oval pieces um, covering the repair, but both sort of uh, tapered out. So one smaller, one bigger oval type shape. All right, so I like to use these um West System um, epoxy kits. Um, this is the 101 mini pack. Um, pretty affordable um, and West epoxy is generally pretty easy to work with. Um, this pack comes with some resin, some hardener, some microfiber um, 403 which is really useful, some 407 uh, filler which is great um, and some gloves and bits and pieces, mixing sticks. Um, 
so it's good stuff. Comes with syringes as well, which is really good. Um, so we're going to get set up with this stuff, but just if you are using epoxy, just make sure you use gloves and get covered up because this stuff's pretty nasty, really, um, and you can kind of get sensitized to it just even from the dust from um, sanding the board and stuff. So get yourself covered up, get yourself like a paper overall um, and wear gloves and just really try and avoid this stuff getting on your skin because if you get sensitized to epoxy you can't really use it anymore and um, so that's a bit of a shame so just take precautions and then you're all good. So the first job here was to cut the dry glass before I get any resin or any wet resin anywhere prepare the dry glass on the board um, is always the best way to go. Now it's super important when you're using epoxies that you make sure that you um, mix them correctly by weight um, because the um, the way that they work chemically it's really important you have the right quantities because essentially molecules stick into other molecules and there needs to be the right number of molecules to stick to other molecules to make something strong um, so getting a bit geeky when you weigh it is is good um, to do that accurately um, I tend to use a set of scales now um, digital scales are best put them in a plastic bag um, and then you can steal them from the kitchen. Five to one on the West system. So let's just zero these scales. Oh, let's get. Right, with, um, with epoxies, you've got to stir them really well because as I say, it's the type of reaction that you're dealing with is, um, uh, it's not just catalyzed. If you're using polyester resin, which a lot of surfboards are made out of, um, it's um, it's just speeding up a reaction that's happening already. The hardener and the resin with an epoxy um, need each other to cure. So you've got to mix it really well. Um, and the other important thing to highlight there is that it's not going to, putting more hardener in isn't going to speed it up. It's just going to mean it's not going to be very hard at the end of the day. So super important to get it really nicely mixed but not get too much air into it because that becomes a bit of a problem later so that was 20 grams of um of resin so you know there's not a lot there but um you can see but i don't think we're going to need a lot but we can always do a bit more this stuff's expensive now this is just the normal um speed i believe the 205 hardener it's you know it's a spring day in the uk i'm in the garage i'm not in any direct sunlight so um i think this will be okay um but you can get the guidance on the packs um and i think you can get a slower and a faster hardener for this stuff um so what i'm going to do now is i'm actually going to save some of my I'm take a new pot um and i'm gonna save a little bit of of resin for my glassing probably a third of it i think using the uh, microfibers i'm going to thicken that mix up now i kind of want to get like a fluffy kind of consistency here because i'm gonna put it in into the repair i want it to have a bit of bulk to it because i don't want this stuff to just dribble out it's just got a bit of stiffness now we want it to have a little bit of run because we want to get it inside that repair. As I say, I'm kind of learning here because I don't do, I've not done real board repairs before. So um, I'm just giving it a go. You know, if it, if it doesn't, if it, I'm not going to trash the board um, as long as I don't use polyester resin. Um, the reason that polyester resin would trash the board, a lot of um, boards are made out of polyester resin in terms of surfboards, but making a blank big enough um, uh, but if you use polyester resin sorry you need to use a different material on your blank um, and getting a blank big enough for a sup isn't really possible unless you use polyester so that's why a lot of sups are made out of epoxy so yeah if you repaired this with polyester resin it wouldn't be cool the whole thing would just polyester resin would um, basically dissolve the, the, the polystyrene core so yeah, we've got a nice stiff mix there. Um, now, we, to some extent, we have to work relatively quick because epoxy it will cure with an exothermic reaction. So that means that if it's in bulk, it will start cooking. Um, it heats up as the reaction starts. So this pot is going to start heating up. And if we get 
and if we don't um, get it in there relatively quickly, um, it'll, it'll cure in the pot and then it's not going to be much fun. The reason we're using these microfibers is because they're essentially very small little fibers that are filler, kind of filler type stuff really, that are just gonna give the resin, which is known as the matrix, a little bit of um, uh, strength. So matrix on its own or the resin on its own isn't very strong. What gives it the strength in a composite material is the, the, um, the fiber, which stops cracks propagating through the resin, which is just a plastic. Pretty agricultural stuff really it's a bit of an art you've just got to practice it to to get your head around it so how's that gonna fit again what makes this strong is the fact that the resin and the glass um, are working together um, so you need to make sure that there's plenty of resin in that glass um, now, because I've put some resin down already, and this is very thin, fine cloth, I'm not wetting out the surface first. Um, and you can actually see that the glass is slowly getting wet out just by what I've put on there already. So I'm actually just gonna use this stick. I'm gonna give it a go. I'm gonna use one of these tongue things that you get poked with by a doctor. I find them quite good. Scrap that, I'm gonna use a brush because Without the brush, it's really hard to wet out the resin. You can see what I'm doing and it's just, see the resin going, sorry, the glass going translucent. I'll get too much on there because too much resin kind of makes the end product not as strong. I probably should have just painted a layer of resin on there. In fact, I'm gonna peel it back like that. Get some resin on that side. And that should help wet it out. Now that probably, yeah. So you can see it's sitting down better now. That's just because it's wet, it's wet out. There's a bit of surface tension um, from the other side really. Struggling a little bit to get that edge to stay. So I just keep working, working it, maybe get a touch more resin into it, just stippling it, just breaking down the glass, making sure that the resin is really impregnated into the into the fibers. All right, let's get that other layer on. So now this second one I'm gonna pop on. Oh, actually, let's not make the same mistake twice. Let's just paint on. A layer of resin. That edge isn't sticking down that well. Just putting a little cut in the fabric just to help it maybe sit. Sometimes that can help. Let's just try and get lots of resin on that to hold it in. So these little um, feathers are really good. You can, if I hadn't been, if I'd have prepped a bit better and I had a bit more experience on this, I'd probably put some little um, uh, little darts out of it to make it a bit thinner. Because actually, I think the fabric is maybe a bit too kind of um, heavy, so it's not sitting that nicely. So now I just want to make sure that I'm not. We haven't got too much height on here because 
I have to, I have to sand this out, it'll be a pain. The glass is pretty, pretty frustrating for sitting down. If anyone's got any tips about what I'm doing wrong there, please let me know. I don't know if you can see on the camera, but you don't want to have too much resin left in it because then it's just brittle. So you can kind of squeegee off quite a lot of the resin, but not too much because you need enough in there to kind of work. But you don't really want a shiny kind of outer to it. I'm just going to clean up. Seriously, you want to get any of this stuff off that you can because otherwise all you're doing is sanding it off when it's super hard. Bit of a wipe on the scissors. Always leave them open. Nice. Right, just to finish, I'm going to take a little bit more of my microfiber stuff and I'm going to just get some into this little crack. So the box is really trashed on this board. I'm not going to try and fix it. It might be a mistake but I'm not going to attempt that. I'm essentially just trying to make a little tool to be able to get the resin into the, the bottom of the box. I don't want to be having to try and sand this filler out later. So I think that could work. So guys, um, I don't know if you can see this, my GoPro's run out, but um, the resin's kind of started to go a little bit stringy um, and it's just starting to cure, it's just starting to turn, is what um, I usually say. Um, it's just too difficult to work now and kind of time out. So um, I didn't think I'd have um, that little time actually, but it's probably pretty warm in here, so um, we're done. Um, so I'm just gonna clean up everything I can, um, go around the repair, just for the last time because when it is just turning like that it's quite a good opportunity to get any edges down that are playing playing up a little bit um, just going to make sure everything's clean wiped down um, any stirring strips are wiped down because then you can kind of reuse them um, if you've got solvent um, clean off your brushes and bits and pieces but a bit of a tip for your brush um, if like me you messed up and you don't have any solvent I just cut the end off so I've only ever used a tiny little bit I've cut half the brush off I get to use that twice Okay, so um, a few months passed. My hair's got a bit longer. Um, summer's um, been on here, so there's not been a lot of swell. So the incentive to continue the repair on the board has been low, but surf season is right around the corner and I need to get this bad boy fixed up. So I'm gonna get a bit dusty and sand her up. So what I've got here is an electric DA. I'm gonna attack um, the, what I've done with the resin and the glass. Um, sand it back. Um, this is basically an orbital sander. Works really well though. I'm gonna get fully suited up. I've got um, what I call a Tyvex overall, keeps the dust out. I'm gonna get gloved up, I'm gonna get masked up, and I'm gonna get goggles on because this stuff ain't very nice. These things come in different uh, grits. I'm starting with an 80, see how it goes. Then I'll go up in the numbers to make it finer if it gets a little bit too um, abrasive. And I'm gonna, I'm starting to do damage to the main board. But I'm gonna start pretty tough initially to get some stuff off. So what I've done there is take the worst of it off with the DA um, because I did a pretty messy job of um, laminating it up and there was lots of big spikes and a bit too thick in places. So I've taken the worst off, doesn't really need a huge amount um, because you don't want to take too much off. Um, and then I'm using the same pad from the DA and I'm just using it to lightly do it by hand. Next step is I'm going to get a block. Um, just to try and rebuild that nice rail profile um, just get it nice and flat so it's as close to what it was before 
see what happens. I'm moving on to the wet and dry uh, sandpaper. I'm gonna use this um, to really start to smooth it off um, and get it good. Less important to use my mask now when I'm on the wet and dry because the water takes up the dust, but all good. just um trying to trying to get the shape right it's really hard to see because all of the graphics on the board and things um make it quite hard to see a good line um but i think it's almost there and actually what i'm thinking is i could probably surf it see how it feels and come back and do a bit more another time as long as it's watertight i don't really mind i might do a little bit more on that give it a surf and the next swell comes and then finish it off. And what I should have probably done is filled over the fin box um, because there's quite a lot of sort of glue that's got astray and got in there so I'm just trying to sort of chip it all out and get it out with some sandpaper. Um, the problem was I actually had quite a broken fin box and the board is kind of written off because you just need to replace all the fin boxes so I've just put quite a lot of resin in there deliberately um, but Probably I could have done a better job of clean, keeping this, these edges clean that I didn't want resin on. Um, but one to learn from for the future. So what I've noticed is that in a couple of spots I've just gone through the glass. So um, I'm going to have to just put a very, very thin layer of resin um, into some of the little voids that I've created. Um, just to make sure it's watertight. I can't do that until it's nicely dried out. So I'm going to get this in a nice warm room so all the moisture comes out of um, the bits of repair that I've been doing from the wet and dry and then I'll just finish it off with a bit of resin and a very light hand sand after that. So that's about it guys. Thanks for getting to the end of the video. I appreciate that was a pretty long one. I learned loads from doing that repair and hopefully I've shared some tips that will help you maybe get the confidence to repair your own board um, in the future. Appreciate that I'm no expert in it and there's probably a load of things I'm doing wrong or could have done better. Um, please feedback if you've got any tips, we'd love to learn and we'll share it with the wider community. Actually did manage to get out on the board following finishing that final little bit. Um, the board seems to be really well, it seems to have worked really well, the rail seems alright and I just managed to get that fin a little bit tighter in the box by using a little bit of electrical tape wrapped around the fin head. So all in all, I'm really happy that I managed to get the board back on the water. It was a nice little project and hopefully it gives you the confidence to try fixing your own board. Um, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you on another subboarder video real soon.